All right, if you found this video on the World Wide Web, it's probably because, like me, you have a beloved Fender ProSonic amp. Uh, I know these have quite a cult following. I've owned three over the years, and I love them. And uh, I've had two black ones, and this is the earliest uh, model that I've owned, the red one. And I bought it cheap, and it was in pretty bad shape, and I have had to do quite a bit of work to it to get it working well and uh, myself and paying professionals for help. Um, but mine developed a problem that uh, took some diagnosing. I'm gonna cut away to another video here to just kind of show what that was all about, uh, a crackling and static noise that developed after the amp had been on for a while. All right, so after about four hours, of idling. This is the sound that starts coming from my ProSonic on the clean channel. It gets quieter when I flip it to the drive channel. Even with the volume down, you can turn everything down. Oh! Maybe that's a clue. I mean, well, that... So it's somewhere in the tone circuit. All right, so let me put these back up. The volume doesn't... Channel volume doesn't affect it. Reverb volume doesn't affect it. Now... I've done a lot of tube swapping. And the one that seems to affect it the most when I pull the tube is V3. But you can hear it's still barely there. Mostly stopped. You can hear there's still a bit of crackle. If I pull all the preamp tubes, then it goes silent. I've changed the power tubes, um, I've changed the rectifier tube, I've changed each preamp tube one at a time to no avail. So it's got to be something other than a tube, seems to me. So as you saw in that video, um, that noise was independent of whether anything was plugged in. Um, it got didn't it wasn't affected by the volume control, uh, but the treble pot did seem to affect the the level of the the noise. Uh, I wondered about all kinds of different things. Um, tube sockets that had developed maybe some conductivity, uh, grid resistors, all kinds of suspects. And the problem ended up being this little capacitor right here. On the schematic, this capacitor is C11, and it's 150 picofarad cap. The original one was a silver mica cap, and it had started to leak DC voltage. And... That was making its way to the treble pot. Uh, when I would first turn the amp on, if I measured voltage right here, it would be zero. And uh, on this lug, outside lug of the treble pot. Uh, but when the noise uh, started to crank up, 
I'd start to see about three volts of DC right here. And then that was getting, presumably getting amplified downstream. This cap has like 220 volts on one side of it and it should have zero on the other side. And that had begun to leak. And so I replaced it. This is actually a 200 picofarad uh, disc cap. That was just what I had handy and I didn't want to have to wait. Apparently 150 is a fairly obscure value and I didn't want to have to wait and order the exact same cap. Uh, and I wanted to use a different type of cap because I have heard that those silver micas uh, not only can um, have a tendency to, to leak DC, but also just don't sound great. And so um, this is a higher voltage rated 200 picofarad cap that I just had in my stash. Um, wasn't super easy to um, get access to the solder joints on the bottom of this circuit board. This is a nice um, through hole, two sided printed circuit board with solder pads both on the top and the bottom. So you probably could clip the leads and then just poke the remaining legs out through the bottom once the solder's heated up and just poke them out with like a a dental tool or something. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and, and kind of suck the solder away and pull the component out um, rather than clipping it. And uh, to do that, um, just since I have this open and I'm showing it, uh, there's three screws holding the circuit board in place. One there, one there, and one there. And uh, But there's not really a lot of um, slack unless you uh, desolder, let's see, if you desolder this ground wire that's going over this terminal strip, just from the terminal strip, that's only about two inches long, and uh, that has to come out to be able to lift the circuit board up. And then I found, I found that if you just removed the first three potentiometers, um, the volume and the two gains, uh, and cut the wire ties that are bundling all these uh, wires together. I'll replace those before I button this all back up, but um, removing that wire and these three pots gave you, gave me enough slack to lift the board up about three or four inches and get to the underside of it. It's still kind of awkward, but I was able to get the solder sucked off of the bottom that, were, that was holding that cap in place, and then um, pop the new cap in, and the amp's been running for I don't know, probably three to four hours, and that sound has not returned, thankfully. Um, I mean, the circuit is somewhat noisy. Um, I can't really tell a difference in the um, the treble response using that, that different value cap, the 200 rather than the 150 peaks or picofarads, but um, I'm, I'm less concerned about the exact voicing and treble response as I am the leaky DC voltage, which was making the amp unusable. So um, everything seems to be working great. I'm not gonna, you just have to take my word for it. I'm not gonna try to do a play test while I just do a simple handheld iPhone video. But I mean, the the gain circuit works fine. I mean, you can kind of hear <laughs> the noise on the, on the channel, um, the reverb is working fine. It's a noisy, circuit because it's fairly high gain, but I do love the clean channel. Uh, I use 57, um, 50, 57, 51 preamp tubes. Uh, is that what they are called? Anyway, they're a lower gain uh, 12AX7 variant, uh, and I use them in the first two uh, V1, V2 stages. Since V1 and V2 are shared between both the clean and the gain channel on this amp. Um, but everything seems to be healthy. The voltages are good. Now the amp does have um, new filter caps and, um, and now it has a new treble cap that hopefully will withstand the uh, its function in the amp. And hopefully this helps others who may run into a similar issue with their ProSonic. So if you don't know what you're doing in here, I mean, this is a live chassis right now, amp is on. Uh, that means there's lots of high voltage swirling around in there. And if you don't know how to drain caps 
and all of that, then of course this is your disclaimer to say, just take it to a pro. But um, if you're out there searching the internet and forums, I only found like maybe two references on forums to ProSonics that had a problem like this with the crackling sound uh, with similar um, symptoms as the ones that you've heard in the video. And um, those forum threads did help me kind of pinpoint things. And I finally just said, all right, let's swap out that cap and see what happens. And so far, so good. So um, hope this helps. And best of luck as you continue to rock your ProSonics. See ya.